how in the world did I end up qualifying for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics? Despite being an over-the-hill athlete, despite having hung up my track and field spikes 13 years ago, despite having picked up an entirely new sport in my mid-20s and focusing on that for the past decade, how did I end up here? It's a bit much to go over in a single video, but the short answer is that it comes down to the IOC's universality rule. According to the IOC and the WAC, there's a single spot at the Olympics reserved for the single best athlete on a team if no one else on the team happens to have the Olympic qualifying standard. As it so happens, that was my 100 meter dash time, where I barely edged out the other top sprinter by eight hundredths of a second. Let's not go over the full 13 years, but it's worth taking a look at at least 2021 and how I got to be here at the Tokyo Olympics. Enjoy. January 2021. I was living in Innsbruck, Austria, enjoying stunning views of the Tyrolean Alps from my balcony and racing skeleton sleds across Western Europe. Qualified for my fourth world championships in skeleton, raced world championships on the coldest and hardest ice the Altenburg track had seen in 15 years, and thankfully didn't die out of the Kreisel. Went back to Innsbruck for two more races, got beaten by a Russian in the final race by one one hundredth of a second, and lost out on an additional 500 euros in prize money. Didn't go to China because the Olympic test event there was postponed due to the global pandemic. Went to Italy instead and explored a ridiculously cool privately owned castle. Started training for the 100 meter dash in Italy. March 1st, flew to America, landed in Florida, where I ran on a blue track, jumped on things in slow motion, lifted things, tried to brush off 13 years of track and field rust with some oh, coaching, yeah. had all sorts of weird knee and hamstring problems, got poked by a bunch of needles and had a laser shot at me, raced three-time Olympic medalist and one of the fastest human beings of all time, Richard Thompson, and was appropriately beaten. Later raced some non-Olympic medalist sprinters in Wichita, Kansas, and felt a little bit better about myself. Back in Florida, saw some beaches, saw some manatees, saw some sunsets. Received an email saying I was selected for the Tokyo Olympics in the 100 meter dash. Flew to Utah, put my skeleton sled in storage. Spent $80 on printer ink to print out the entire unedited manuscript of my upcoming non-fiction novel. Made the jump to mirrorless and upgraded my DSLR to Canon's new R6. Tested out the camera in Zion National Park. Did an acting job for a mattress company that rhymes with furple. Did a modeling job for a shoe company that rhymes with blaucony. Ran in the Utah Summer Games and set a new Masters age group record by over half a second. Flew to Hawaii. Ran on a dirt track in slow motion. Ran on a Mondo track. Jumped around, lifted things up, and dropped them. Nerded out on some really cool fruit that grew in my buddy's backyard. COVID tested, twice. Flew to Guam for an 18 hour layover. Did a workout in a Home Depot parking lot at 5 a.m. Saw a beach with ridiculously clear water. Snagged a ride in the back of a pickup truck to the Guam airport and flew to Japan. Landed in Japan with the athletics delegations from Guam and the Federated States of Micronesia. Went through customs, immigration, and COVID testing. Emerged from a giant green pipe and was greeted by an Italian plumber and his traveling companion, who seemed like a fun guy. Was amazed by cool Japanese technology, like a bathroom mirror that didn't fog up and an automatic bidet in the toilet. Flew to Fukuoka for a pre-Olympics training camp on the southern Japanese island of Kyushu. Saw a snake, caught the snake and added it to my ramen for dinner. Just kidding. Was interviewed on national TV in Japan where I promptly butchered the Japanese language. Lots of COVID tests, ran around, jumped on things, lifted things up and put them down. Flew back to Tokyo and was processed at the Olympic Village. And after all of that, I walked through the Tokyo Olympic Stadium for the opening ceremonies and fulfilled a lifelong dream. Well, it's been quite the journey so far and needless to say, it's not over yet. Plenty more content coming from Tokyo, including your requests of what you'd like to see here at the Olympic Village. Thanks to all the Patreon subscribers and thank you for watching. Till next time.